got another project going on here on my Arctic Fox 992 truck camper. So since I had the oven out during the process of trying to install an inverter, I decided it was time to put in another 120 volt AC electrical outlet. So I picked up the parts here. I've cut a hole. I marked everything out with green painter's tape and then drew some lines exactly where I wanted to cut out and then used a sharp utility knife to make the cutout. Got some sticks of wood cut that I will use as backing material, basically interior framework inside here. That will give the cabinet some more rigidity. So this is gonna be a super easy upgrade. As you can see here, all of the DC and AC wiring runs down through that little wiring and plumbing chase and it's about three and a half inches wide or so super easy upgrade wiring just follows the plumbing all the way down there i've got access to the back of the electrical panel but really what i'll have to do is pull out the electrical panel it's over here pull that out install a new breaker and route my wiring this will give me a nice out of the way place to plug in a dehumidifier or small electric space heater. Yeah, so here's a close up view of the outlet. It's your typical RV style where you pull off this back panel and then the wiring is uh, press fit. I've got my first piece of uh, vertical framework installed and then I glued it. I pulled my electrical panel out of the cabinet so that I could poke my wire through the back here. It's this wire. I probably could have done it through this opening, but it was just a lot easier to get it through the back side with having the panel out. But then the wire just goes through into the inside, and once I get the panel mounted back in the cabinet, I'll connect all those wires and install my new circuit breaker. So that wire, you can see the white wire right there, it's 14-2 household style wire and I just uh, tucked it in and have it following the other wire bundle. I'll take this clamp off later and tuck this wire underneath that clamp. And some of my other clamps I've taken those loose to do some other work down here with my inverter installation. So here's the wire right here and I'll poke it down through and uh, bring it out the hole where my outlet will go. And partway through the project I changed my plan. Stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll show you why I... but I had to enlarge this hole and in doing so my electrical box ended up hitting this pipe. You can maybe see that drain pipe up there. That's for the, the sink drain. I would recommend if you're going to do this project is to cut your opening all the way down to the bottom of this cabinet. There's a piece of framework that, that comes up about an inch to maybe an inch and a quarter. There's a little piece of framing that I added right there just to stiffen up the, the wood. And you can also see some framing that I've added on the side. Once I found out my electrical box hit that pipe, I had to cut my hole down lower just a little bit. And then in doing so, the hole was too big, so you can see that I've added a little filler piece of my original cutout onto the top to fill in that space. That will all be hidden by the AC outlet's electrical cover. My change of plan was to use a bunch of standard parts from Home Depot. Here's a remodel style box. This is a piece of tape that I put on here to hold this little tab while I was test fitting a black cover, a circuit breaker, and a Decora style black outlet. All told, this project is pretty cheap. It comes out to $9.81. If you do decide to go with the electrical box style outlet like I'm doing, Something else to keep in mind is this water line right here. My box comes fairly close to that water line. That is the connection for the fresh water inlet, the, the city water connection that you'd use at an RV park. So here's my wire tucked down inside. I've got it routed over the top of this big wire bundle and then it's 
going over there to the left of the city water inlet line and then below my freshwater fill line. Score my insulation. And pull that outer sleeve of insulation off, just like that. Peel back my covering over the ground wire. And I'm going to tuck this in that port right there. As you can see, this little tab likes to fall down, so that's why I had taped this up. As you're test fitting the box, it's a good idea to put some tape over this because every time you put the box in the hole, that tab is probably going to fall down and then it makes it difficult to get out unless you take a screwdriver and rotate the screw counterclockwise to spin that tab back up. So anyway, back to our wiring. get it to the point where our outer sheathing of insulation is locked in on that tab. White wire goes to the silver side, black wire goes to the brass screw, ground of course goes to the green. So I'm looking at the screws here. So what we're going to do is loop that around this direction. And you want to have the loop formed so that as you tighten the screw, it's essentially going in the same direction that you formed your loop. You could also use the back wire function of these outlets. And then we will fold our wires up inside of the box. And I'll dial back my clutch just a little bit more. seem to be in there tight. Super easy project is just about done so we'll go ahead and install the cover. As you can see this is a tamper resistant outlet. It's really getting tough to find AC electrical outlets that aren't these tamper resistant style. All of our bus bars use Robertson head bits, or otherwise known as square drive. So I'll loosen one screw and tuck my ground wire down inside of there. And then I'll do the same thing with my neutral wire. And then my breaker, take my black wire, and then once you have the wire in the breaker, I take the left side of it, hook it over the retainer back there, kind of hard to see it, and then just sort of use a rocking motion and push it down over the bus bar like that, and then we are good to go. And then we can reinstall our cover panel. And I do need to break out one more slot. I'll use my utility knife to cut the plastic. You notice here that all of these breakers are tandem and this one is not. A tandem breaker 
was about five times the cost of a single breaker. And I didn't see the need to have two new circuits, so I just bought the single breaker. And then this kind of snaps into place, and we have a screw, also square drive, right in the center. Then we'll reinstall our door and call it a wrap. Super easy project, under $10. If you don't have wire, then of course it's going to add a little bit to the cost. I already had the wire, so that's a cost that I didn't incur in order to accomplish this project is wire that I've had for quite a few years left over from another project. And you know what? Somebody actually has used this and broke it. That is slightly annoying. Ah, uh, the furnace just kicked on.